Today we'll be talking about Dev Null, which is known by some as the Void. And you might be thinking to yourself, what is so special about this particular device? And why is it referenced as the Void? Well, let's first make sure that it does exist on this system, as it should on most. Well, let's explore it first. So if we list the contents of Dev, will we find Null in here? And we sure do. It exists in the Dev directory, short for devices, is a special virtual device file that will discard anything that you send to it. So are you ever frustrated and you want to scream? Well, I just screamed in my terminal here. Well, now you can do it without the system even knowing or hearing you just scream into the void. If you do echo, ah, and redirect that to dev null, the system won't know any better. You won't get an echo back. You've just screamed into the void. Okay, so now you understand what dev null is. Are there actual uses for it besides blasting data into non-existence? Well, let's talk about that in a moment. But what's particularly interesting here is that devices that are located in the dev folder or directory typically are devices that help us talk between user space and an actual device or piece of hardware through the kernel. For example, you could have a device such as a CD-ROM located in, so like dev CD-ROM1 for our first CD-ROM, which can then read and write between the CD-ROM kernel and through the device dev CD-ROM1. Back to the user space for maybe an application that's trying to get information out of that CD-ROM, but the dev null is specially made. So this is a very special device that's made to do one thing and one thing only. It doesn't interact with any hardware like typical devices do in the dev folder and instead just communicates virtually with software to completely discard anything you send to it. So back to things we can do using dev null. Well, one thing you can do is redirect something into the void to do a speed test on your internet connection. So how do we do that? If we do wget and type in some URL, and for example here, I'm just going to take the daily image of jammy jellyfish Ubuntu that's currently in beta since it's a fairly large file, and I'm going to send it straight to the shadow realm by sending it over to dev null. Well, as things are coming in, this current server is capable of supplying me with 20 megabits per second speed, and I'm testing out my speed right here from the terminal. A quick and easy way to test your speed and not take up any room on your system, because as you're downloading, it's going straight into that void that we're talking about, dev null, especially since Jammy Jellyfish hasn't been wanting to work for me. Every time I've been trying to install it, it's been giving me trouble. Another thing that you can do is if you're trying to log something that you don't necessarily care about from a process stream of information or some program, what have you, well, now you can send it straight to dev null. So sometimes there are unimportant errors or outputs and you don't have to deal with these anymore. Send them straight to here. Another thing you can do is self-host a mail server and sign up for some spam messages, redirect it to the void. There's all sorts of uses here, some not so useful. So next time you're tired of a script or a program requiring you to log standard errors or outputs, try redirecting them straight into the void or dev null. And now you understand why dev null exists on the system, what it's used for, and how to have some fun. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to smash the like button. And since you made it this far, make sure to subscribe below. Hit that notification bell for more Linux and programming videos. Catch me in a great community on Discord, and I'll catch you in another video. Thanks for watching.